Hi everyone, welcome back to the Magic Garage, it's Nick here, and today I'm going to be teaching you an illusion called Spike. Now guys, if you haven't heard of Spike, it's a really, really cool and actually quite dangerous effect that can be formed, be performed close up and on the stage. Now I'm not going to go into detail about the trick, but a few things that I do want to tell you uh, is that you are going to need four regular everyday styrofoam cups. Now these can be borrowed if you wish. And you are also going to need a two and a half inch iron nail or steel nail, really just any nail. Uh, you don't really want it to be any bigger than two and a half inches though because two and a half inches is the perfect size. And then you're going to want to place that on like a platform. Um, in my case, all I did was simply take a piece of wood and hit the nail through one side of the wood until it came through the other end. Now, if I am performing this in the public or something, I'll usually use a piece of wood that takes you sanded down and actually varnished. And that acts, uh, it looks really, really nice and it's just a better presentation if you trick. Now, I'm not going to be doing a performance of the spike today because... I actually need a, another uh, participant from like the audience uh, that can actually move the cups around while my back is turned because that's how the trick works. And um, usually I would perform the trick to the camera, but I can't do that with this one. I don't have anyone else around at the moment to help me. So instead, I'm going to leave uh, a couple of links below the video in the video description that will be performances of Spike. So now we're going to go straight into the tutorial. Oh, and uh, one more thing, guys. Just really be careful with this. You know, you've really got to practice the trick until you're super confident with it so you can almost do it with your eyes closed. Because if you do mess it up, guys, like you can with any illusion, you might actually end up with a nail through your hand and nobody wants that because apart from the fact that it's going to bloody hurt, you can end up with a hole through your hand. So yeah, anyway, that's just a, a tip uh, to perform spike. Really perform it until you're very, very confident with it. So now let's get straight into the tutorial, guys, and I'll show you how this trick is actually performed. Hi, guys. Welcome to the tutorial for spike. Now, guys, spike is actually, as hard as it looks, a really easy effect to perform. And it's also great because you can use borrowed items. Uh, usually, no one's going to have a nail line around, so you need that. You can use borrowed cups. Now, the way Spike works, guys, is actually by memorizing the uh, serial number on the cup that the nail is put under. Now, no styrofoam, no two styrofoam cups will have the same serial number. Every serial number on every styrofoam cup will indeed be unique. And that's what makes this trick so easy to perform. And you'll be surprised um, at the fact that no one actually realizes because, I mean, you can, the serial numbers are quite easy to see, guys. Uh, you'll be surprised at the fact that no one actually realizes the serial numbers it's because they're too concentrated on what's under the cup, the nail under the cup, and, you know, your hands. So they're not actually looking at the cups to see if there's anything funny with them, which gives you a lot of cover and a lot of protection. Now, let me uh, start off by showing you guys what you're going to do. You're going to start off with the four cups, have them inspected if you like. I suggest you don't because someone might see the serial number. Uh, have two or one, one or two members of the audience. I actually like to use two members, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Have, uh, have a member come up to uh, a member of the audience, come up, and uh, make sure that when you're starting you know, the introduction to this effect, don't actually show everyone the nail because... Um, no one's really going to volunteer if you tell everyone that you're going to use a nail because they might, you know, think that you're going to use their hand or something. So hide the nail under one of the cups. <clears throat> have a member of the audience come up and then have them select a cup. First of all, take out the nail, obviously. And now because they're actually already volunteering, they can't really walk off, you know. So take the nail out, have them select a cup, turn that cup over. And then now you're going to start pattering on about how you're going to play a game of Russian roulette. And you're going to say you're going to make it a little bit more dangerous and use a nail. And then if you are using uh, two members of the audience, like I usually do, you can give the nail to the other member and then have them inspect that because it is a real nail. There's nothing fake about it. It's a real nail from the garage. Also, guys, you might want to have a tetanus shot before you do this effect in case you do mess it up. Uh, you might want to have them inspect the nail, and if they do, that's cool. Now, take that nail place the selected cup over the nail and while you're actually placing the cup over it you're going to memorize this serial number here and in this case on this cup it's actually one four five so i'm actually actually going to memorize that number i'm then going to take the other four cups you're going to take the other three cups sorry and place them 
in next to the cup, the R selected cup. Now, at the moment, you still know which cup has a nail under, obviously, because you just memorized it. <clears throat> and so does everyone else. And you're going to say, now, generally, if we were going to play Russian roulette, I would be the person that would mix the cups around. But that's not really going to work here, because if I mix the cups around, I can still tell which cup has a nail under it, and you're just going to lift the cup that has a nail under it. And you say, so let's make it a bit harder. Now here's what's going to happen, guys. You're actually going to turn around, okay? You're going to turn your back to the audience. And you're going to say to the spectator, I don't want you to do anything tricky. I simply want you to take the cups and put them in any order you like, making sure you double check which cup has the nail under it. So they'd mix the cups around in any order they like. Um, and you know, you would apparently have no idea which cup has the nail under it. Da 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 da. Once they mix the cups around, simply turn back around, guys. And now what you're going to act, act as if you're doing, you're going to act as if you're trying to kind of read the cups. And a really good uh, convincer that you don't know what's which cup the nail is under is actually to spot the cup that has the nail under it. So in this case, it would be this one, because it's one, four, five. And then simply look away from the cups and look at your participants while you're actually so-called reading the cups. And what I like to do is place my hand flat over, just over one of the cups, kind of rub, then hover over the next one, rub again, hover over the next one. And then when I get to the cup that has a nail under, I'll hover over it for a little bit longer, but not too much. Then go to the next one, and then kind of come back to that and kind of go to the next one, but then actually say, hmm, and kind of, and that's when, as if you're getting a stronger and stronger feeling every time you hover over that cup. Everyone knows the nail's under there, so they're probably going to be freaking out. Now, <clears throat> you might want to tell everyone to keep a straight face because, you know, you don't want them to give you any clues. Hold your hand and say, yep, I know which cup doesn't have the nail under it. Hold your hand over the cup with the nail and then lift your hand up and then slam down on the cup either side of it. So you don't actually hit the cup with the nail under it. I know which cup has that doesn't have the nail under it. Smack and hit one of the other cups on the side of it. Or if it's on the uh, left hand side, hit the cup next to it and so, uh, so on and so forth. Smash that first cup and now you can turn it over and you say, see, there's no nail. Place that to the side, or even give this, uh, chuck that out to the audience if you want. Everyone loves souvenirs. You now have three cups left. You're going to do exactly the same thing here. All you're going to do is turn around, have uh, <clears throat> either one of your participants or your participant mix the cups around in any order he or she likes. And now you're going to turn around, and as if you have no idea which cup has an L under, obviously all you have to do is look for the bar, the uh, serial number that you memorized on the cup, which in this case was 145, did you remember? So it means it's right, right here. Now you're going to, once again, act as if you have no idea, spot which cup has an L under it, and then try and look away, because if you're looking at the cups are too long, everyone's going to automatically think that you're actually looking for something on the cups, which... In, re in reality, you actually are. So you don't want them to think that. You kind of just want to quickly spot as quick as you can which cup has the nail under it. Make sure you're certain about it. If you're not, simply just kind of glance at them again, and then you go, and then, you know, once you're certain about it, look away. Look at the uh, audience. Look at your participant. Now you can hover two hands if you like. Maybe even have someone else hover their, ha hover their hand over and then hold on to their hand, and you're going to say, I know which cup doesn't have the nail under it. Hover once again over the cup with the nail that uh, na nail under it. Then simply it's not this one. Smack down on that cup. I'm not doing it very hard here, you guys, because uh, I've got another camera angle on the table, so the camera will be, 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 be a bit shaky. Uh, but slam down on that cup that doesn't have the nail under it. Put it to the side and once again chuck it out to the audience. And now you're left with two cups. And now you can tell everyone that... Each time you take a cup away, your chances of hitting that nail actually go down. Uh, and now you actually only have a 50% chance of hitting that nail. So it's nowhere near as big as it was at the start. What you're going to do here, guys, is there's two ways you can end this trick. There's a way that is really quite dangerous, which I don't suggest you do, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, you can actually use your head to get rid of the last cup. And the way this works, you're going to ramble on about, you know, how you, the chance of you hitting the nail are actually less now. Da 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 da. And then you're going to say that you're going to make it more dangerous because it's not dangerous enough now. You're going to turn your back around 
have the audience move the cups to a selected part of the floor, which will be selected by you, have them mix the cups around, and now you can simply bash the last cup with the uh, with your forehead. And now that's an alternative way you can inspire. But once again, guys, that is very, very dangerous because if you do mess it up, you could end up with this through your forehead and that is actually quite life-threatening, quite a life-threatening injury. Uh, having the nail through your hand isn't, okay? So I don't suggest you do that, but that's just an alternative way to end it. Obviously, the other way you can end it, end it would just be to simply wave your hand over, obviously have the turn around, have the spectators mix the cups, wave your hands over, same presentation as the last two times, simply hover over the cup that has a nail under it, and then smack down on the cup that doesn't, and say, I know, I knew that these three cups did have the nail under it, but I know, and so do you obviously now, that the last cup, under the last cup, remains the two and a half inch nail. This guy's, the trick by itself guys, Spike, really isn't that entertaining. All you're doing is smashing cups. It's really the presentation that matters here. So you need to be able to present this trick and perform it very, very well to get a good reaction. And if you can perform it well, then you are going to get an amazing reaction. It's a nerve-wracking trick. People love it. I love it. You're going to love it. I guarantee you, Spike really is an effect that hits hard. And it's also quite easy to perform. And as dangerous as it is, if you practice it enough, you should be able to perform it with very little risk. That guy's is Spike. I hope you like it. Uh, it's cool that I've got two cameras now, so from now I'm going to be shooting with two camera angles, and I'll, uh, I'll see you all later. Peace.